what you're saying? Do we really believe what we're singing? Let's lift our hands high in the air and start to rejoice. Because if we believe for a victory, that our focus is not on the issue, it's not on the problem, it's on the answer. His name is Jesus. Come on, let's just worship Him. We worship you, Jesus. We thank you for the victory that we live in. This is our faith, Eva. This is our victory, even our faith, you said. So we declare it in Jesus' name. We call forth healing power to be released in this house in the mighty name of Jesus. In, each, in every house, in your house as well. We call forth the power of God to flow down upon us now in the mighty name of Jesus, to rise up on the inside, to come down on the outside for the power of God to bring about the will of God. We boldly declare it in Jesus' name. It shall be done. It shall be done. What God has said shall be completed in your life, in your household. This is the promise that he's given to us. Oh, hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. We glorify you, Jesus. Go ahead. Sing it loud now. Jesus appreciation. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, dear Jesus. God is good all the time, and God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. He's at work even now amongst us. Receive what you need from Him. Don't, you don't have to wait till later. Just receive from Him. Receive whatever it is you need today. He's here ministering even now amongst us. So just grab on to the promises of God. They are yes and amen. That means they're yes, you agree, and they're done in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. So why don't you greet those around you? Let them know you're here. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Hope City Brampton. We want to give you a welcome online as well. Thank you so much for being with us today. We believe for the presence of God in your household. We believe for the power of God in your household, that even now healing power can flood into your home. Jesus loves us. That's all we can say. He is at work amongst us even now. Hallelujah. Praise God. It seems that every time we come together, there are those there with us that, that are here for the very first time, and so we want to welcome you if that's you. Even if you're at home, we appreciate you coming on with us. And so we have a gift for you at home. All you need to do, my friends, to receive that gift is to send a text message to the number. I believe our hosts have it up. It's 647-560-0905. Uh, and you send the initials VIP. I'll say it again, 647-560-0905. And if we're here in the house, you'll have a, a, a nice orange banner out there in the hub area that you'll want to go to. If it's your first time here, we've got a gift to put in your hand. Well, I hope you're doing well today. Amen. It's the end of the month, so we want to celebrate your birthdays and anniversaries. So if you had a birthday or anniversary this month, please stand up. Did you hear that? April Any birthdays, birthdays? Anniversaries? April anniversaries. Come on. April's a good month. If you're sitting, just raise your hand towards those standing near you. Want to speak God's life over them and bless them. 
Father, we just thank you and praise you. We thank you. You've given us life to serve you. We thank you. You've placed your life within us that we can live it out and let your glory be seen all around. So we bless those today with birthdays. Let your blessing rest upon them. Let them rise up stronger in you as you've given them another year to serve you. Father, let the covenant of marriage grow tighter and tighter between each other and you, that your blessing will rest upon them heavily, and they will be an example to those around them of what you can do as we join together with your love. We praise you and we thank you for them now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And we want to we release all our junior highs. Five, six, seven. The big flag is waving over there for you. Pastor Vic's waiting for you as well. Let's put our hands together for these young ones. We appreciate them. God is at work amongst our young people. I just got a note that, uh, that our young adult retreat is, is pretty well full. Is that right? 130 young adults going to get together in two weekends from now and just have a fantastic time. So God is at work amongst us. No questions about it. Praise God. I saw a sparkle on somebody's finger this morning. Sneha and Ariel have announced their engagement. Young lovers, praise God. So good to see this. God is so good to them getting married all the way in November. And so... Uh, there's time for others to get in ahead of them, just so you know. Praise God. <laughs> it is good. So good. God is just at work amongst us and helping us every day. Uh, yesterday was uh, Dawson's. Dawson's often on stage, our music director. He was on stage, and he, uh, he actually got his Bachelor of Theology degree yesterday. Isn't that great? So we, we appreciate him. I didn't tell him that. We're, uh, we're excited about him, and, and we'll, we'll uh, get him out for pictures a little bit later for you, all right? We want to pray, though. We want to pray for families. Often when you come together like this, there are people that come with burdens on their hearts. Sometimes uh, you've received a diagnosis. Sometimes that's happened in, fa in your family. I, I know that um, uh, Caroline, one of our church family here, lost her sister in, in Jamaica, passed away this week. Pastor Reed's brother uh, passed recently. His funeral will be on Friday. And maybe there's others. I know we've talked even before service to some who've lost loved ones recently. They're still carrying the heaviness of that. But often there are those that need healing in your body. Maybe you need a job. Uh, we want to pray. So would you stand on your feet right where you are, please, so we can join our faith with you. Yeah, all the way from the back to the front. Good to see you back, my friend. All the way, wherever you are, even if you're at home, you can stand up at home. We don't see you, but God sees you. You see, it's, not, it's about the expression of our faith. Are we, are we willing to, to say yes and to reveal? Well, God knows everything, yes, but he says that you have not because you ask not. So we want to ask today, that you, would you lead us as we pray? And if you're around these ones and have faith for God's intervention, just stretch your hands out towards them as well, please. Father, we just thank you today that we can rely on your word. Father, that your word has the final say in our lives. So, Father, whatever the situation is amongst these ones, we thank you that your word has the final yeah, say. Amen. That you are the healer. You are the provider. Yeah. You are the one that opens doors that no one else can open. So, Father, we just release your presence upon them. Father, as they reach out to you, whatever they need, that they will receive of you. Because as we were singing, you are a good father. Yes, you are a good provider. Thank you, you are the one that plants the way in front of us. So, Father, we just release our hearts to you today. We receive from you by faith. And, Father, let your blessing rest upon them. Let them hear your voice clearly. Let them see the path that they're to walk in. And let them not be distracted by other things around them. But stay focused on what you are doing and what you are saying. We give you all the honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You know, every, every week we receive prayer requests. 
And most of our friends put it on this little connection card. It's in the seat back in front of you. Never hesitate, please. Always let us know what's going on. If you want to give a message to us as your pastors, you want to uh, let us know about something that's happening, maybe even a, a co-worker. We love to pray. We're praying in the office every, every work day. And so do fill this out, and then you can put it in an offering bucket when it goes by, or you can put it by the door on the way out. Well, as we've been worshiping God, we were worshiping and singing. In a few minutes, we're going to worship as we receive the word. But now it's time to worship him with our giving. And as we give to him, it becomes worship in his sight. And his blessing comes upon you. So if you need to prepare, there's uh, envelopes in the seat pocket in front of you. The uh, information for those that like to use their technology is there. And the booth will be open after if you want to use our kiosk. You know, God is so good. He's doing wonderful things around the world. And as we give, God is enabling us to help others, not just here, but help others in other places in the world. This morning in the first service, Pastor was telling us that just today, but which was yesterday in India, in the north, right near the Pakistan border, Jammu. Jammu. Everybody know? Okay, you go home, get your atlas out, or just Google Jammu, India, and you'll see right where it is. They just baptized 250 new believers. Isn't that fantastic? See, part of our giving enabled them to go there and do that. I tell you, God is amazing. You know, in the world we see right now, Lots of things are happening that don't sound good. But in the midst of the darkness, the light of Jesus is starting to shine brighter and brighter. So as we give, we give unto that so that the gospel of this kingdom shall be preached to every ethnic group. Then the end will come, the Bible says. Amen. So the ushers are ready if you'd like to come forward. And as they do, just turn your attention to the screen. Let's just pray for a moment. Father, I pray blessing on every dollar given, every amount given. Thank you, Lord, that we love you. That's why we give. But we love the world around us, the people around us, the nations around us. And as we give, Lord, we pray that you would multiply the effectiveness of every amount given. Bless your people, but Lord... Touch the hearts of those that we share your word with in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I think we have a little uh, video on the screen. Hey, calling all WOW women. We have an exciting event on Saturday, May the 11th at 10 a.m. It's our Ladies Legacy event. It happens on Mother's Day weekend, but we're celebrating all ladies with the incredible Joni Foster that will be with us, as well as a buffet that will cause you to just water at the mouth at everything that you can imagine will be on that buffet table. We also will have incredible prizes, some fun and great, great times of fellowship together. This is an event that you don't want to miss. Tickets are available now for $35. Come on and join us and bring a friend. All right. Well, how many are going to be joining us for Mother's Day event? Wonderful. <laughs> uh, gentlemen, you're going to be uh, making sure that your moms, your grandmothers, your aunts, your sisters, your nieces, all the special women in your life uh, that are 13 and older are able to take advantage of that great morning of fun and prizes and great inspiration. So uh, be part of that. Tickets are available in the hub, which is our lobby area, and uh, be a part of it with us. Well, we've been talking about chosen. How many know we are chosen to worship? And so uh, this morning in Psalms 149, it says, Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. His praise in the assembly of his faithful people. 
Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the people of Zion be glad in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing and make music to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes delight in his people. He crowns the humble with victory. Let his faithful people rejoice in this honor and sing for joy on their beds. Then 150 says, praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Then it finishes off in verse 6. It says, let everything that has breath. So is anyone disqualified from praise? If you have breath, it means you can praise the Lord. Now, just because you have the ability to do so doesn't mean that we always do it. In fact, there's a lot of people that have a lot of understanding or misunderstanding concerning worship. And I want you to turn with me to John chapter 12 because there's a great story in here about a woman that is going to worship the Lord in such an extraordinary way. It says, six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume, and she poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of the disciples, Judas, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. And he did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you but you will not always have me. What a powerful story. I want to help you get a hold of the revelation of this story. Because what is revealed knowledge to you will change your life. And we're not just talking about a radical woman who just had a, a whole lot left over and she could afford to give a year's wage how many of us can really afford to give a year's wage to anything? But she is coming to this house. And she's going to do something that is so extravagant that bears witness to her love, her adoration, her respect, her gratitude for Jesus. And she's going to do it publicly. And that's important. Because, see, a lot of times our world wants to make our relationship with the Lord private. And they'll say, oh, religion is a private thing. Well, how many know we don't have religion? We do have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And, you know, the relationships that are really important to you, how many know they're not private? I have rarely done a wedding ceremony with just the bride and groom. We usually have other people there to witness it. We want to share and testify of our love. We're not ashamed of it. When we have a child, how many know we want everybody to see how beautiful our child because everybody knows our child is the most beautiful? On the happy moments of our life, you just heard about Dawson. I mean, he's not going to keep that a secret. He's going to share it because... When profound things happen, you don't want to keep them private. I want you to know that when you really love the Lord, it's not a private matter. It's a public matter. It's not something that we're ashamed of. It's a relationship that has saved our lives. 
that continues to be everything in our lives. So why would I keep it private? And so this woman is going to pour out this oil upon Jesus. And I know that Jesus identifies it's going to be for his burial because in just a short time, he's going to walk that road. He's going to carry that cross. He's going to get on that cross. He's going to die for you and me. And that oil is going to be so significant because even though there will be ones that will witness him dying on that cross and they'll do so with love in their heart towards him, there will be many that as they're flogging him, are cursing him, are spitting at him, there will be many that will laugh at him and mock him. And doing the hardest thing that has ever been asked and required of him. As he walks, the wind is going to blow across his skin. And as it does, it's going to pick up the aroma of that oil. Not cheap oil, expensive oil. And as he picks up that scent, that scent is going to declare that someone loved him. Somebody was grateful for his life. And that as he's doing this, he's doing it for the joy set before him. And he's going to have a relationship all the days of his life. So this is an incredible thing. But also don't miss that this is the product of her worship, of her adoration, of her love of God. And she's letting everyone know there is no one that has done for me what he has done. And see, as soon as we see extravagant worship, we are quick to criticize, we are quick to judge. We can say what they did. What a waste. That's a waste. It could have been used someplace else. What a waste. But Jesus didn't see it as a waste. Mary didn't see it as a waste. See, I think that we're highly critical and judgmental because we don't understand the warfare of their worship. We don't understand that maybe they've experienced something that we have not experienced. And it is placed within them an understanding and a love and an adoration of the Lord that cannot hold them back. And they got to release it and they have to express it. See, to me, in that room, Mary has experienced a brother who was dead. All hope was gone. Jesus was not around. It could immediately change the whole destiny of her future. And Jesus appears, and Lazarus is raised from the dead. And she has experienced Jesus doing for her something that most people have never seen in their life. Only Jesus. So do you think she cared that they were mocking her? Do you think they, she cared that they were laughing and pointing? That they were judging her for her extravagant worship? Can I ask you a question? Why do you? We are so sensitive to who's pointing, who's laughing, what opinion they are making about us, how we lift our hands, how we wave our hands, how we clap, how we sing, if we clap off beat, if we sing off tune. We want to be dignified. We want to look really put together. You know, when you are crazy about someone, you do not look put together. When you are all out in love with someone, you will do crazy things. You will kneel down in a restaurant, interrupt everyone's dinner, and say what you hope is the rehearsed lines. And you will do it. You just heard about Sinea and Ariel. Ariel took the day off on Monday. 
Monday night he was going to propose. He said, what did he need a day for? He wanted to make sure everything was right. Everything was romantic. Everything was set in place. He wanted to guarantee that her answer was, yes, not I'll think about it. Yes. He wanted everything to be perfect. Do you think he was thinking if it would be an embarrassing moment? Was he wondering how people would perceive this extravagant gesture? No, he was only thinking of one person, Seneha. Would Seneha be pleased? Would Seneha be surprised? Would this be enough? Would she say yes? Do I smell good? Do I look great? Because I got to secure her heart tonight. Worship is not a song. It's not a place. Worship is a revelation and a relationship where your heart communicates to God what you think about him. See, worship is worth Ship. What is he worth to you? And see, we just had some time of worship. Now, we had a band. We had great singers. We have other people in the room that sung with you. We created the perfect atmosphere. So if you can't worship here, when it is the prime area to worship, I guarantee you, you're not worshiping out there. Because worship is not a moment, it's a lifestyle. You know when you've hit real worship? Not in here because oh, you should be able to worship in here. But when you're going to the job that you don't like and you're facing the home that you got to get in there where everything looks like it's falling apart. When you're sitting in the doctor's office waiting for a report. When you get up and you feel like all hell has set itself against you. Worship is more than a song. It's a revelation of who he is to your life every single day. Every single day. So that we can worship with you. So that we understand that the people around you today may be experiencing warfare that you know nothing about. And because of that, they are pressing in to remind themselves and to let the Lord know that they know he is great. That they know that he is unfailing. That they know that their steps are being ordered by him. That he knows that they are not forsaken. That they know that he knows my name. And as they begin to tell the Lord who he is, they are put in remembrance of who he is. And faith rises on the inside of them. And they become stronger. They become encouraged. They become inspired. And all of a sudden their problems are shrinking as he is increasing. Because whatever you behold is what is magnified in your life. And you begin to see him and know his power, his truth. See, I find that the greatest worshipers around are the ones that are experiencing some of the hardest opportunities in life and we think oh they're great they're always smiling they have no trouble you know who we would say this about pastor reed look he's laughing already he has that hearty belly laugh i don't think i've ever seen him frown he just laughs he's just full of joy if you tell him a problem, <laughs> he just laughs. 
There's a greater revelation that's going on in the inside of his life than what you're telling him, and that is, my God is sufficient. And there's nothing too difficult for him. And he doesn't lose that in the moment of trouble. See, oftentimes we say, oh, we praise him because, you know, he is good. And life is good. And yeah, I got the job. And everything is going well for me. But what happens when that report changes? And you lose that job. And a situation hits your life that is out of your control and certainly not what you wanted to happen. And now, when people say, how are you? There's not a good report on your lips. And now you're given an opportunity to worship. And Pastor Vic gets up here. And he says, come on, let's stand. You say, I don't want to stand. Put your hands together. I don't want to clap. Let's say, lift our hands. I don't want to lift my hands. I got here and you should congratulate me. I showed up. Because sometimes that's the attitude we have. But you know, in Acts chapter 16, verse 22. There's a story about Paul and Silas. They get in some trouble. It says the crown joined in the attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. And after they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. Then he received these orders, and he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. And about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. And the jailer woke up and when he saw the prison's doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. We are all here. Why worship? You have been beaten. You are imprisoned. You are shackled. You are in dirt. You are in disease. There is no getting out. There is no getting around this thing. It looks like God has forsaken you. It looks like everyone has forgotten you. It looks like your days are ended. And here we have Paul and Silas in the midst of all of that starting to praise the Lord. Starting to worship God. Not because everything looks good. Not because all their prayers seem to be answered. Because God has not changed in their circumstance. He's still God. He's still glorious. He's still strong. He's still the one that was going to the cross for them. Jesus has not changed. See, that's real worship. When your life worships God. See, when you only can give him a praise when you're happy with him, you're an atmospheric worshiper. You have to have the right atmosphere. I don't know. I didn't like that song. Oh, we sang it. Goodness of God, goodness of God, goodness. How much are we going to sing the song? We got it. God is good. Let's move on. I wonder if we sing songs over and over again because you don't get it. Because faith comes from hearing. And you just put it on autopilot when you get into church. And you sing a song that you hear and sing, see up there. But you're just going through automatic pilot. It hasn't touched your soul yet. It hasn't been revelation knowledge yet. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Some of you think, I don't even know if I'm in a grave. (laughs) What's there to get up from? But man, when you sing that and you start thinking, I have been in a pit of depression. I have not been hardly functioning. Everybody is paying the price around my home because... That depression has been on me strong. I am in a pit. I am in a grave. I got to get up. I got to get up. I got to get up. Worship did that for you. 
It brought you out out of a revelation of a song that you sung. Not once. Maybe you didn't get the revelation to the fifth time. And so while you're counting how many times we do the same song, we're going to do it just enough for someone to get free. Just enough. You know, the first uh, opportunity that I had to pray for someone where I saw a demonic manifestation of a devil manifest was I was 18 years old. Now, I want you to know that God and I had a contract. I told him, you send the devils to other people, and I'll deal with the other stuff. And I'm good with that. And uh, we had a young man. He was probably 20 years old himself. He had gotten saved. And he wanted to get filled with the Holy Ghost. And I thought, great, let's do it now. And as I laid hands on him, immediately he went into this trance-like state. I thought, whoo, hello, whoo. But he was not there. Immediately the Lord said, this is not natural, this is demonic. Cast that thing out of him. Now, you would think that I could have said, hey, we had a deal. Demons are somebody else's problem, not mine. But listen to this. Your God is so good. The anointing on you and within you is so powerful that whatever situation you face, as you just step in, God has it under control. He will tell you what you need to do. You will be calm. You'll be collected. You'll, you'll understand it by the Holy Ghost. You say, is this really so? It is so, so. So I remember calling that thing and telling it to come out. And it was a rebellious demon because it didn't seem to want to listen to me. But the Lord immediately said, it's heard you. It's coming out. Just start to worship me. So I just began to worship the Lord as this young man. I can tell. I mean, he's struggling. But just a couple of minutes later, all of a sudden, I see his hands go up. I see tears start running down his face. And he goes, I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. Oh, God, you are so good. I'm, he begins to worship the Lord in a way that was so incredible. I thought I will never be afraid of this again. This is the most glorious thing to see. But you know what else I learned that day? Free people worship. It's their natural expression. It's the first thing they do when they get free is they worship. So you say, you know, I'm just not much of a worshiper. No, you're just not free. Because the freer you get in your revelation with God, the freer your worship will be. It's the truth. We didn't start off this way. You know how I start off? Just putting one hand up in the air. I was sure everybody was watching me. We are so high on ourselves, aren't we? Like we're the only ones that matter and everybody is not paying attention to anybody else in the service but us. Because that's what the devil tells you. You're going to look foolish. People are going to laugh at you. So it was just, here, here I was. I, I think that looks more foolish than anything. And it wasn't high up because I just did it like this. <sighs> there were cute young men visiting that morning. So I was very aware. <laughs> I wanted to look good. But I was also aware of the Holy Spirit prompting me. And then this hand joined this hand. Then we moved a little higher. And I closed my eyes so I wouldn't know who was looking at me. And I got lost in the presence of God. And I began to know what it was to worship the Lord from a heart that was connected to him. You see, everyone has a story. We've been teaching on that. But see, my story is this. Nobody has been for me like Jesus. Nobody. I know people say they're going to be there for you, but when they get to your good and bad and the ugly stage, they're gone. They don't stick around. 
Or as long as you're doing something for them, you have value. But as soon as you stop, you don't have any value. Well, as long as you're a happy person and you're a funny person, then you're entertainment for the group. But if you stop being that, you're kind of a downer. See, no matter how I come to Jesus, he's always happy that I come. And he's ready for whatever I bring him. And he loves me when nobody else will love me. And he's there for me when nobody else is there for me. And he has been good to me, so good. Better than I could have ever imagined is how good he has been. So you understand that when you know who he is, it's not hard for you to have something to say to him. See, we have people that don't even show up for worship because they're uncomfortable with worship. It's just one song after another after another. No, what you're missing is an opportunity to give God his gift. See, when you pray, how many know you're not doing anything for God? You're doing something for you. But when you praise, you're doing something for him. Praise is my thanksgiving. It's my heart's response to who he is and what he's done for me. It's like, you know, those of you that have children, are they helping pay the bills? No, they're creating bills. They're creating work. They're causing a lot of your energy to be used just for their lives to live. But you know what is significant in a relationship with them? Is when they come up and say, you're the best dad in the world. Thank you so much. Oh, it melts your heart. You're the most incredible mom. You're the best. It just melts your heart. And it doesn't matter what you've done for them and not what you've done to them and what you will continue to have to do. Those words mean everything. Listen, worship and praise is our time. It's our gift to say, thank you, Jesus. This is who you are to me. This is how I value you. This is how I worship you. This is how I'm so grateful for you. Jesus, you are to me what no one else is. Jesus. Jesus. This is why you better be careful who you join your life with. I'm speaking to the singles. If you're married, you're already in. And we'll help walk alongside of you to victory. And believe God with you. But singles, what you align your life with is for life. They need to know the Lord. How do you worship with someone who doesn't know your Jesus? How do you pray with someone who doesn't know your Jesus? Well, they know him. They just don't love him as much as I do. Point, match, set. Why would you be with them? In this auditorium, you've got to look for the worshipers. If I'm not sitting next to you, if I'm not in your area, and we're having a service, and we're worshiping the Lord, that's saying something. I'm looking for worshipers in the house who are not ashamed to worship their God, who do it publicly, who have something to say about who he is. I don't know what to say. You say things all the time. You say things about your favorite team, why you love them, how great they are. You say things about your favorite friends, your favorite companies, your favorite products. You have a lot to say until we get into the presence of the Lord and then people don't, I don't know what to say. So borrow somebody else's words if they are impacting you. That's how I started. I just would position myself around people that were really talking to Jesus through worship. And then they'd say something, and I'd say, yeah, me too. And then somebody else would say, I said, mm, I'm th I'm that too. And I just borrowed words. You say, oh, pastor, that's terrible. 
You do it all the time. You buy cards. They're not your words. You just sign your name like you wrote it. You didn't write it. You borrowed those words. And then you're impressed with yourself when they close and say, thank you. If you need to borrow some words to start that are meaningful to you, borrow those words. If you need to sit around people that are going to inspire you to move, then sit around people that are moving. You say, now, pastor, you're stepping on our toes here. Because, you know, we're a multicultural church. And we come from different cultures. Yes, and the greatest one is called Christianity. That means the Bible is our mandate. Not your family, not your culture, not your country. Jesus. It's just Jesus. So if it says dance, we dance. If it says clap, we clap. If it says sing, we sing. If it says move, we move. But my culture, get your culture saved. Because this is Jesus. And we are first Christians. That's who we are. People say, what's your sign? I always say, the sign of the cross. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. That's, that's what we give credence to. Jesus. You say, I don't know, I would need help. You just need to get free. We're going to help you this morning. We're going to help you this morning to get free. Because if you can't worship, you're bound. Or maybe you're just cold. Your heart is hardened against the Lord. You've get, gotten so familiar with his presence that everything's become routine. Raise your hand. Bring your hand down. Sing, clap, sit down, stand up, sit down. It's over. And your life is unchanged. Worship. True worship changes you. You cannot leave the same way you came. It changes you. You're not the same. You can't finish the fight you started on the way to church after you've worshiped. It changes you. It changes you. You, you cannot be who you were when you've been in the presence of the Lord. And worship is about you connecting with the one who knows you and loves you. And allowing him to hear from your heart. And getting lost in that moment. It's not a song. Unless I have the right song, I can't worship. Then you're a performer. You perform. You hear the song and you perform. Worship is not about a song. It's not about a beat. It's not about a team. Worship is about an experience that you have with God. And that experience happens when you're on your way to work. And when you're in the shower in the morning. And when you're mowing the lawn. I mean, it's just there. And when you've heard the worst nudes of your life and you lift your hands as tears are streaming down your face and you say, God, this is not you. I know who you are. You are good. You are with me. You are for me. I don't know how I'm getting around it. I don't know how I'm getting past it. But in Jesus' name, I will get through it. Because you are with me. That's worship. That's worship. And nobody can take your worship. Oh, they can try to take a lot of things, but they can't take your worship. Even in prison, Paul and Silas, nobody could take their worship. They couldn't imprison their hearts. No, what, what, no... No wonder the earth shook. No wonder 
the chains fell off. Can you imagine? Even creation itself responds to worship. Even creation itself responds. And family, if you and I don't do this, the trees of the field will clap their hands in adoration of the one who made them. The rocks will lift their voices and cry out to God, creator of the universe, Jesus. The universe itself will cry out if we do not cry out. If we do not worship, creation itself is smart enough to worship God, to magnify God. They identify who he is, and he has not done for, the, for nature like he's done for you and I. We are the ones that he went to the cross for. We are the ones he saved. We are the ones that he's anointed. We are it. We have more to worship him than a rock and a tree. And if we can't worship him, who's going to worship him? It's the gift we bring. I think we should worship him. I think we should be able to lift our hands. I think we should be able to tell him how great he is, how thankful we are in our lives. And Father, every bound person, we command that spirit that has held them captive, be free in Jesus' name. Let liberty come to our hearts. Let it come and be demonstrated through our lives. No rock is going to take our place. We want to worship you. We want to thank you, Jesus. You do for us what nobody else can, what nobody else will. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, you are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. Thank you, Jesus. I worship you. You are here, working, working in this land. I worship.
Come on now in your words. Can you lift your hands and tell him what he is to you, what he's done for you, how grateful you are, who you are, Jesus. You're the life, you're my breath. You're that place that I can stand. You're the one that hides me. You're the one that cares for me. You're the one that holds me. You're the one, Jesus, that is always there for me. Jesus, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, Jesus. Amazing, amazing Jesus. There's nobody like my God. Nobody compares, nobody does for me what he does. Oh, he's my God, he's my miracle worker. He's my sustainer. He surrounds me on all sides. His mercy follows me. His grace is upon me. Surely goodness and mercy. Oh, they're part of my life every single day. I'm walking in the steps that he has ordered. My Jesus has thought of everything concerning my life. He saw it all. He saw it all. He saw it all. And he made a way. He made a way. He made a way. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, you're getting it. Whew. See, praise doesn't get God to come down. Praise allows you to come up. And I know we haven't given you enough time. You want more. So come back tonight. Because we're going to have a night of worship. And it's going to be an extraordinary night. And you can grab hold of what you've just taken hold of today and reveal more but you can praise him this afternoon Monday morning all during the week remember it's not a song praise is a life that we live amen praise the Lord well Pastor Randy is going to come as he does can you just let all our worshipers up here and our team you guys did amazing Thank you so much. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Pastor Randy and uh, then Pastor Why don't you be Kiri. seated for just a moment? You know, it's such a blessing to worship together. Yes. You know, we can do things at home, but it's different when we come together. So I want to encourage you to come out tonight at 6 o'clock. You can bring a friend. You can, maybe there's friends from other churches you know. We're not trying to take them out of their church. We want to bring them into the presence of God. So they're invited along with you tonight. Uh, Dawson, where are you? Uh, I, see, I see Grace back there. Look at this man. Doesn't he look nice with his robes of righteousness on? <laughs> Congratulations, my friend, on uh, serving well up to this point, okay? And it's going to continue and continue and continue. So uh, as we mentioned earlier, graduate with your... Bachelor of Theology, uh, I, I got mine in 1986, okay, so I'm a little bit ahead of you. You can catch up anytime now, praise God. And so we just, we love you, we thank you for your serving here, and we look forward to many more years of serving Jesus together. We call out the musical gifts. Yes. Stretch your hands out towards them. Come on, my friend. You stretch your hands out. We call forth the musical gifts. We call out the sax players. We call out the brass. We call out the strings. We call forth the gifts of God. We call forth the vocalists now in the name of Jesus from young and old. We call them forth out of their hiding into prominence so that Jesus can be lifted up even higher. We thank you, Father, that we have a great director of our music here. We pray for your anointing to continue upon him and those that work closely with him that you get all the glory and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Now, praise God. Now, he, he's going to go over there so you can get your picture taken with him. I know I saw some. Now, girls, he's taken. But I saw some of you. Just, it's all right. You can. Sarah's watching. We, we have to watch that. Praise God. <laughs> God bless you, man. Praise God. Thank you. I mentioned in the first service that uh, one of our church family here, Grace Martin, stand up, Grace, please, has been with us working behind the scenes for 
uh, 10 years, and now she's moving to St. Catharines to be close to family. And, and so we have some flowers for you, Grace. Come get your flowers. Come, please. Thank you so much. Praise God. She said, I will not go on the stage, and so we won't pull you up on the stage. You just have to come stand down in the front. Hallelujah. Isn't it wonderful to be able to serve the Lord? And Grace, God's worked in your heart. You told us how you came. Now you're not the same as when you came 10 years ago. And we thank you, Lord, for the goodness of God. Thank you, Lord, for the way you worked in Grace. And we know you're not finished with her yet. You're still going to use her powerfully for your glory. But you're not finished in her either. So we thank you, Lord, for the presence of God. Go with her, be strong within her. To continue the healing work, the restoring work, the strengthening work within her. We bless her now in Jesus' name. Amen. Please receive her. God bless you. <laughs> See, I didn't get you up on stage after all. <laughs> Praise God. Pastor Kerry, why don't you finish off? Has it been good to be in the house of the Lord today? Have you experienced his presence? Well, I'm looking forward to seeing many of you, if not all of you, back tonight. Doors will open at 545. Worship night begins at 6 o'clock. We'd love to see you here. In just a moment when we dismiss, what I'm going to ask is normally we stack the chairs nine high, the side sections. We're actually just going to stack the back five rows of all three sections just to push everyone forward for worship night that will be happening at 6 o'clock tonight. Um, as you're leaving today, as you exit through the hub, you're going to notice there's a couple of different booths. Uh, ladies, make sure you don't forget to get your Legacy Brunch tickets coming up in two weeks' time. Kids Camp, uh, early bird registration has opened. Registrations are coming in. So parents, if you have, if you have a child uh, that will be in JK to grade 8 this September, they're welcome to join us this summer at camp. Uh, stop by that booth as well. We've had a new uh, merch drop and so if you'd like to pre-order some new merch there is a booth in the hub for that as well and if this is your first time here with us thank you so much for joining us today we feel honored that you've chosen to spend time with us when you exit into the hub today you're going to see a big orange banner please stop by there some of our leaders are there they'd love the opportunity to find out your name and to get to know you a little bit better i'm going to invite everyone to stand at this time um, and we're going to me talk for just a second. You know, I mentioned about the good things happening in India. And God has put a special love in our hearts. And he, through his wisdom, has brought many people from South Asia, India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, in that, in that area, into Brampton. How many have noticed that? We, we notice it. Well, this is God's direction. And he's placed us here as well. And so we will continue to pray for the nation of, of India, Election time is on now, so that's a season. Pray for them. We continue to pray for an outpouring of the Spirit of God. It's happening in many places now. But we believe God's got us here to be able to impact the community around us. And so yesterday, Pastor Finley and Liji and, and others were there for a South Asian fellowship, a Hope City, Brampton, South Asia fellowship here. And that fellowship is not just eating, not just... It's preaching, so he's a, he's a preacher. He's a pastor. And so from now on, on Sunday nights at, at 5 o'clock here, will be a South Asian fellowship meeting, Hope City Church fellowship meeting for South Asia. So you can tell your neighbors, you can tell your friends, and th invite them, let them come out. And uh, we're always going to have many that come to our main services from all parts of the world, including India and Pakistan and other places, so we, we, that's part of who we are. But we really want to reach out and touch the community around us. How many will put your faith towards that? Will you put your faith towards that? Yeah, we want to do that. So, Father, thank you. And as you're standing here today, I'm just going to invite our prayer teams to come forward. Maybe you're here today and uh, you would like someone to agree with in prayer on a specific need. So our prayer teams are going to come. They're going to be at the front, uh, and so just when we dismiss today, please feel free to make your way forward. But maybe you're here today and you've experienced loss. I just want to let you know that we've been running a grief share program on Wednesday night, and this Wednesday night is our last grief share. 
Uh, and it's not too late. So if you'd like to come Wednesday night at 7 o'clock here, Pastor Reed and the team will be here. Uh, we want to be able to walk with you if you're going through a season of grief. Just a reminder, the giving kiosks are open. If you have your connection card that you've completed with your prayer request, please take it with you today and put it in the offering bucket on the way out. I'm going to declare God's blessing upon you as we go today. God, I thank you that you are a good father, God, and that we've experienced your presence today. And so, God, as we go outside of these walls uh, this week, God, help us to remember that in everything we do, that it can be an act of worship. God, let us experience your presence, not just on Sunday, but every day of the week, and let, it, let us share it with those around us, I pray. In your name, Jesus, amen. Have a fantastic week.